Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited to have Brian Massey, who's one of the top conversion optimization experts. Brian is known, as you can see, as the conversion scientist. Yes, he's got the lab coat too. It's the only other person I've interviewed who also has a lab coat on. And his, in his over 20 year career, he spends his days and nights optimizing clients' websites to increase their revenue and leads. They have some really interesting clients and they've had amazing success with the barcode company, college universities helping them getting students and donations in addiction treatment centers, just to name a few. We're all over the map. Yes, and Brian, thank you for joining me. Glad to be here. By the way, you know there is a psychological effect called um, enclosed cognition okay. in which the person wearing a lab coat or a uniform actually has an increase in their ability to uh, answer uh, cognitive problems. So essentially their IQ goes up a All few right. points just by putting on a lab coat. Well, so uh, by the way, you look marvelous today. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> Brian, since it's Inspired Insider, I wanted to hear about one, what's been a really low moment and then how you pushed forward through it and then on the flip side, a proud moment? Well, you know, I think our um, our lowest moment would have to have been when we um, signed up to do pay for performance. So we had a deal where we were being paid a retainer and we also got a bonus based on how much we increased the conversion rate. And as you can imagine, on a complex site, it's really hard to determine how much was how much of conversion rate increase was due to the market, how much was due to promotions the company was going to do anyway, and how much of it was due to us. But we came up with a formula that would take this measurement and this measurement and this measurement and average those. And, in, and if it went to this, then we got a certain percentage of, of, of revenue. And... We had um, a month go by, and it was a huge increase, and it looked like our bonus was going to go through the roof. And we're like, "Yeah, we just started. We know we didn't make any change. So we started working did very vigorously. And the next month, we had worked vigorously. They had had specials, and again, we had a bonus that was just through the roof. And, um, you know, we felt like we had to stick by our guns because that was the agreement. I mean, if every time the bonus was – you know, in our favor, um, and just coincidentally was, you know, early on rather than being lower early on, then uh, we wouldn't have much to, like to stand on for future agreements like that. Which, by the way, we don't do anymore. Um, so it ended up being a very um, confrontational negotiation. We came to a good settlement, and we lost a customer. We lost a very interesting customer out of that. So that was kind of the low point. You mean they said? It wasn't due to you, and so they didn't want to pay you the bonus. That's right. And we said that's painful. We said you're you you might be right. It may not be due to us, or not all of it. But the agreement says this is how we calculate it. And so we want. I mean, that was the agreement. We're going right. to calculate it using this. Um, and you know, we had offered to cap it, and they said no, no. no we want you guys to be motivated to really you know make us rich. And, um, and I think we could have. I wish we. I wish we had. Um, been able to keep going with them. How do you navigate that type of negotiation? Because it is a client relationship, but then also you deserve to be paid a certain amount. I'm sure this happens all the time in a lot of business type of situations. What? Did, how did you come to the table and how did you handle the, the negotiation? It's not an easy process. Well, I think probably the most important thing we did is we got on a plane and flew out there. Um, and, you know, the face-to-face, -face, um, the face-to-face -face made it, um, more confrontational, but realistically confrontational. There's an amazing ability of the human mind to read somebody's face. So rather than trying to read their voices, read mm -hmm. their faces over the phone, we knew where they were. So um, I think that was probably the most important thing. Um, uh, never wavering, but we did compromise. We didn't take the full bonus. We told them what we were willing to take. Uh, we did a good job of preparing our, our, our case for it. Um, and, um, uh, you know, I think that's all you can do. Yeah. Um, what would you tell someone if they deal with the same situation and someone backs out of an agreement, what advice do you have for them? Um, well, it, uh, I 
guess my you know we always took it from the point of we didn't we didn't we, we talked about litigation but we didn't see that as a tactic and we didn't mm -hmm. use it so um you know i think uh holding the other side to their highest in other words expecting even when they get heated and, and what, what they sound irrational to you assume that they're working for the best and they're working for the fairest um and uh, i think there's a there's a fundamental difference in the way people will behave if you expect a certain thing from them mm -hmm. um even in a business situation but you know sometimes somebody's job's on the line and they negotiate a bad deal with you and i mean we've had one other situation where it was like oh we didn't know you were going to charge so much didn't quite understand the agreement and uh, it was a much much smaller amount of money but um I, you know, I think holding them to their highest and um, planning ahead of time where your concession points are. So mm -hmm. here's how much I think. Here's where we're willing to, to concede and concede slowly. So, you know, if, if you're talking about a $100,000 deal, your concession points are going to be like at $1,000. All right, maybe we'll do 190000 Maybe we'll do 180000 I mean, I'm sorry. Um, $99,000. Yeah, right. $99,000. Yes, you, you guys do the math. $99,000, 98000 <laughs> And um, uh, don't worry about seeming unreasonable. You can keep going, but that's where really where you find out where their point is, and mm -hmm. and, and find a, a compromise that both of you feel like, all right, I, I can take that. So lesson learned. Now you don't do the pay per performance. Yeah, you know, pay performance has has potentially two outcomes with the wrong organization. I wouldn't rule it out categorically, but number one, you are wildly successful with them and you become too expensive to stay keep be kept on. Or you don't. You have inconclusive tests for a long period of time. You're not making any money with them. And the, in, the incentive is for your employees to go and go, well, I'm making money over here, so I'm going to spend more time on there. Mm -hmm. And so it never really actually gets its, its fair shake past some of those early failures. So it no, it doesn't work. And when we do flat rate, fixed price consulting like we do, we don't even do hourly. Flat rate, we uh, it gives us the freedom to be as um, – do as much as we need to do to delight the customer. Yeah. And um, uh, so that's what you want. You want someone who has the resources that you're giving the resource to really yeah. put a lot of money in your pocket. And yeah. I, would, I recommend that you pay any company like ours a lot of money. <laughs> I mean, I could what, see what it sounded like. I could see the, I mean, what the, the first deal that the guy made with you that they want you to be motivated. So they want, didn't want to cap it, which, which I would think makes perfect sense. Yeah. You know, they want you to be motivated. So, yeah. So, what about the proudest? You know, I think that um, there's been a number of uh, proudest. For me, the proudest uh, has been oh, really over the last six months. We've brought on a um, a new conversion scientist, uh, or and we've had one that's been with us for longer. But uh, the two of them really have delighted clients um, have been able to come in get up the learning curve on reading the tea leaves that are the analytics and all of the other research that we do um, and then consistently delivering um, wins yeah. uh, I mean um, in one case we start off very rough we had a couple of inconclusive yeah. tests yeah tell me about gate. that yeah uh, well, this, these were language tests, and, and we were changing the language on buttons. This is the barcode company, and uh, the control beat everything. <laughs> I mean, um, and we were struggling because we uh, we were struggling to get to con uh, statistical significance. So there was also a little bit of all right, should we go with this conclusion or not go with this conclusion? So it, you know, just felt very rough. And so to be able to to turn that around and turn that into a tripling of uh, conversion rate um, just it just feels great so we're running, running kind of a high we have um, we're in, in demand and our uh, our process is really working uh, we do have tough clients as, you know in, in other sectors but um, it just feels great to um, have see other people catch the disease that I got back in 2006 mm -hmm. of Oh my gosh! This brings everything together—the the data, the technology, the development, and the the, the entrepreneurial side. You know, because we're really scrambling to make more money here. Um, to see it uh, 
pop up in your employees is feels really good. Is it hard to get clients to listen? You know, like until you triple it, like if you have these inconclusive tests, when you triple it, they're like, I'm all ears. But before that, in the first initial test, I would think it's hard to, I don't know, convince them they're used to a certain way for a long time. You know, or actually, maybe what's, not. what's harder know. is, so there is a lot of back and forth. The clients begin to get excited about this and they become, they come with their hypotheses. And then we say, well, you know, we have some of this data from a previous test or we saw this over here that says that's probably not a good hypothesis. And, you know, usually um, that works. I mean, we always oftentimes a client will come to us with a great hypothesis like oh my gosh why isn't that on our list but um so that usually works out what, what actually is is harder is uh in one situation we had a client that that sold uh, sports memorabilia online and in internet explorer if you went to their purchase page so this is somebody who's added something to the cart they're buying they are going through the process and they change the state that they live in um the um the the terms of the uh, the shopping cart change, oh. and a little little one of those little twirling rings goes off while it's going to the database and grabbing the new tax information and stuff. Well, in Internet Explorer, that didn't go away, and it was spinning right next to the credit card number field. All right, so imagine this: you're about to put your credit card number in, right? But you're not about to enter it until the browser says it's okay, and it's spinning. And about 30 seconds in, another one popped up. And now you're like, I'm not going to give my credit card to no, these No possible hopes. way. Yeah. 30 seconds later, another one. So you got three of these spinning things. We, uh, we designed some JavaScript that fixed it. We actually ran a test. We wanted to see how big an impact this was having because this is at the buy point. Yeah. Uh, and it was costing them over a million dollars a year. Wow. In revenue. That's amazing. And we presented this to them. And they were like... Um, Okay. We're like, wait a minute. What's going on here? And a lot of times when we see uh, a test that delivers a 25% increase, that generally means when we put it on the site, it's going to see a 10, 12% increase in actual um, because a lot of other things come into effect that in, change yeah. the results. And, you know, like 25%, uh, that, that seems okay. And we're doing the math. I mean, the back end was like, all right. We just made you a million and a half dollars. You know, worst case, um, that's more perplexing to us when they no reaction. Yes, no reaction. Yes. Yeah, and there's certain organizations when you're when you're dealing with uh, someone who is more worried about their job, and in the enterprise organizations, it really is about career yeah. advancement, and they don't really. You can tell that this is not something that they think is going to help get them ahead. It's They're just not as excited as yeah, it's not you know, their business with an individual yeah. owner or somebody who reports directly to the CEO or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's that's more frustrating. To Love me. it. It's like we're rah rahing and they're like, yeah. Silence on the other end. And you're like, what's going on here? They should be <laughs> they should be hiring a marching band and marching right. Through Maybe our they're office. covering the phone and just screaming or something. I don't know. <laughs> <Maybe so. laughs> <laughs> Brian, this has been an absolute pleasure. Where can we point people towards? Where pe you know, we mentioned a few sites. Where should people go to check out more? You know, everything we learn, we write about. We are really a teaching organization because that's what it's going to take to get more of these websites uh, up and, and optimizing. So come mm -hmm. to conversionscientist.com. Yep. And uh, we post several times a week there, case studies. Yep. Head scratchers, things we've learned. Yeah. There's a lot of audio. There's a lot of video. We've got a podcast. If you like to listen to things on the commute, um, and uh, you know, we've got the data that, that answers some of the questions you, that are, I know are burning in your little brains. So, yeah. conversion scientist. Yeah, I was reading one this morning. Why no one is reading your emails? That was a good one. I like that yeah, one. Yeah, and yeah. There's a bunch Everything of others. Is fair game. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and also, you'll be able to download that report if you're in the university world. Um, we're going to be doing those reports. We're going to do doing at least one a month in, for different industries. So um, uh, absolutely go to the contact page and send me an email if you want us to do your industry. All right. To yeah, see. I have someone to introduce you to with the universities, actually, now that so we're off. I'll, I'll tell you about that. But awesome. um, so any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? So, um, entrepreneurs, I, you know, um, 
those of you that are embarking on in any business right now are going to have a website to support it. Um, I can't think of an exception. And you're going to go hire a web developer or maybe do that yourself uh, and a designer to tell you what to do. Um, the, a marketer today is not going to be able to go off and do that anymore. But the good news is that the data is ready, ava readily available. If you're not a little afraid to get a little mathy, maybe understand a little statistics, but I strongly recommend that go and poke around in analytics. Make sure that you've got this Google Analytics free tool installed um, and start um, building this database so you can test your stuff. That's, yeah. that's where it all starts. Start poking around. And I know most entrepreneurs are pokers. They're going to get to know just enough about a space that they feel confident um, either winging it or hiring. They can competently hire somebody who can do it for them. You need to be doing that on the data side because it will accelerate your growth, especially out of the gate when those few precious leads, those few precious sales, or those few precious users yeah. will make or break your business. Yeah. Awesome, Brian. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah. I'm glad I could come. Awesome. Awesome.